We're in for a major revenge game tonight, and also Ben Johnson has earned an apology. Hey, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. Yesterday, we got a little caught up, so we're dropping one here this morning to preview the Ohio State game, but we're also going to have a show this afternoon, this evening after the game concludes to talk about what we saw and where the Gophers go from there. So, Tap in, be sure to hit subscribe so you want the latest and greatest daily Gophers content. Then definitely be sure to follow over at Locked On Golden Gophers wherever you find your podcasts or over on YouTube. Be sure to hit subscribe, like, and comment with the other Gophers fans across the nation. Now, today we're talking about the revenge game narrative against Ohio State. Jameson battles back in Diggy Town for the first time, and I think the Gophers are ready to shut him up. All respect to Jameson Battle and what he did for the program, but I think this one has a little bit of extra spice, a little bit of extra flair to it heading into uh, the matchup tonight, but also knowing the stakes are high for the Gophers in these next three games. Speaking of that, we're going to talk about why these next three games are the most critical games for the Gophers this season. And then finally, we're going to talk about why Ben Johnson has earned an apology from this fan base, regardless of where you are on the spectrum of, you know what, I am all in and I'm bought in now, or I still am skeptical. He earned an apology. I'm going to tell you why, but let's dive in on the Ohio State game first. Revenge game. Big time game. Lots on the line. Quad two win opportunity for the Golden Gophers. Now, Minnesota lost to this team back in December on the road in their second road game of the season, and the Gophers lost by 10 points. Now, if you watch that game, you saw a team all out of sorts in the first half, not playing good basketball. People were probably like, oh, here we go again. This is what the whole season is going to be like. Then you hit the second half, and this Gophers team has been a second-half team. They start to come back, especially on the back of Dawson Garcia, who ended up having 36 points and 10 rebounds in that matchup. Now, overall, this is a Minnesota team that was down 20 with 15 minutes remaining in the second half at the Ohio State game. Now, Minnesota pulled its classic second half scrap back on the shoulders of Dawson Garcia, like I said, and eventually cut it to a six-point game with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining. Now, they weren't able to bring it all the way home or even take a lead at that, but the Gophers showed they can hang with this Ohio State team early on in the season, and now you've got a team that is much more confident. Chemistry is built up. Their their timing and their understanding of being able to play without Dawson Garcia is, well, is, is good as well. Payne has stepped into a bigger role. Christie has stepped into a bigger role. Michael Mitchell Jr. has stepped into a bigger role since that point. And Elijah Hawkins is one of the best distributors in the country. In fact, he's the best distributor in the country. So overall, I think we're in for a good matchup tonight. Now, in that game, what stung the most was that Jameson Battle, after hitting a big three, was taunting the whole Minnesota bench with a stare down. And you know what? I know this Gophers team for a fact felt that. They did not like that. They did not appreciate that. And they're going to want a little bit of clap back when it comes to playing him at home here in Dinkytown. That homecoming for Jamison Battle, they aren't going to want that to go smoothly whatsoever. I think the Gophers are going to have a little extra fire in this matchup. Now, even Gophers such as Mike Mitchell Jr., who didn't play with Jameson Battle last season, were not feeling that vibe, and I think they are ready to avenge that loss in that moment from the December matchup. Now, if there was any game I believe Minnesota could absolutely put their foot on the gas and try to throttle an opponent, it is this Ohio State game tonight, and I think you're going to see a Gophers team extra motivated, 
fired up by the fans and ready to deliver. So I have a lot of confidence heading into this game. It's Jamison Battle's first return to the barn in an opposing uniform. Now, Battle is having himself a rock-solid season with Ohio State, even with the Buckeyes having a poor season as a whole. Battle is averaging 30 minutes a game, 14 points a game, along with five rebounds and one assist a game. What stands out the most, though, is his three-point shooting, 43.6% from deep. This is by far his best in his career. His next highest season with three-point percentage was 36, so he is shooting the lights out for Ohio State this season. Now, the month of February has been a little bit up and down for Jameson Battle. To kick off the month, he had 17 points, then 19 points. Then his next two games, he really struggled with eight points and three points coming against Maryland and Wisconsin. And then finally, he had a big game against Purdue as well with 19 points. So if Minnesota can slow him down, that would be a great first step in set positioning themselves to get a solid win, a quad two win, which is definitely needed for the Gophers' resume in trying to get into the NCAA tournament. Now, in their first meeting, Ohio State, Minnesota, Bruce Thornton, who is their best player for Ohio State, and then Jameson Battle, who has been their second best scorer on the team, combined for 51 of their 81 points. So they absolutely handled almost all the scoring. Now, Roddy Gale Jr. also had 16. Those three players together almost had 70 of their 81 points. So that's where a lot of their scoring comes from game night in and night out. You're going to need to try to stop or slow down Bruce Thornton, but he's going to get his. But if you can frustrate Jameson Battle, if you can make him shoot uh, more so closer to his career average as opposed to his season averages when it comes to the three-point percentage. If you can force him into contested, tougher shots, I think that's where you can start to frazzle and frustrate Jameson Battle like we'd seen at times when he played for the Maroon and Gold. Now, those two players, like I said, Thornton and Battle will be the keys for Minnesota to frustrate Ohio State, and I would look for Payne to have a big night defensively if the Gophers are to find any success. He's going to have to slow down Thornton. Now, who guards Battle? That's the biggest question. Cam Kersey has played some really good defense over the last few games, but I'm not sure he's going to be the one lined up against him. Braden Carrington has been one of our best perimeter defenders. He could take some spurts, but I don't think it's going to be a whole game type situation. Who else outside of those two really take take him on? Joshua Joseph could get some minutes against him, uh, but I don't think you're going to see Hawkins or Mitchell against him. The size difference is too much, and Jamison Battle will probably look to take one-on-one opportunities there. So I think you're looking at a lot of JOJ, Braden Carrington, uh, Cam Christie, and maybe, just maybe, even a little bit of Parker Fox, his former roommate, who probably wants to add a little bit of extra motive. uh, motivation to this matchup. Now, it's a major game for Minnesota's hopes and opportunity. Like I said, at a quad two win, which is definitely something that helps when it comes to building a tournament resume. Now, that being said, if you are crossing your fingers for any NCAA tournament hopes for this Gophers team, Minnesota, then for Minnesota, then these next three games are critical to pay attention to. And I'll tell you exactly why these next three games could make or break the Gophers' chances coming up next. First, I want to talk to you about our friends over at eBay Motors because it is the place to be when it's coming to hooking up your vehicle and your ride or die, making it the best it could possibly be because passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. So eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle, no matter what your style is. If you're into speed, if you're into power, if you're into style, they've got you covered over at eBay Motors where they have over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, and you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And on top of that, the best part is they have the eBay guaranteed fit, which means your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. So they've got you covered. They've got your back. They've got over 122 million parts to choose from, and they've got things from roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and superchargers. So much, so much. I am not a car aficionado, but I know if I ever need anything for my vehicle, eBay Motors is the first place that I'm going to go because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP 
and bring home that dub. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, and the eBay guaranteed fit is for you as customers only. All right, Gophers fans, let's talk about these next three games because these next three games on the Gophers men's basketball schedule are the most critical of the season, in my opinion. You know, yes, there are some games you wish you would have had along the way. Wisconsin, Purdue, those both could have been ranked and quad one type wins. But these next three could make or break the Gophers chances at getting into the NCAA tournament. Now, a lot of folks are saying if Minnesota gets 20 wins, they should have a shot. I've said that here on the show. but that is true. While that's true, they still need quality wins in, in that grouping. So of those next six games that they have, yes, you want to get four more wins and get yourself into that 20 wins column, but you need to have the right wins along with it to get your NCAA tournament hopes uh, at the top of the list. So overall, which games Minnesota wins is going to be very important at this point. Now, as it currently sits, Minnesota Minnesota had a very easy non-conference schedule, and that non-conference schedule is not helping the Gophers whatsoever for their tournament uh, case. In fact, it's actually probably hurting their case because they haven't played enough quality teams to have more resume-type games, more wins on their resume that could qualify them for more consideration when it comes to the NCAA tournament because when you're looking at wins and you're looking at the type of games you're playing quad one and quad two games are everything when it comes to resume building but quad three and quad four they're just kind of games on the schedule to make your record look a little better get some warm-up in for younger teams get the chemistry going work out the problems and what have you so when it comes to quad three and quad four games Minnesota took care of business. These are the games that you should have won. And Minnesota went 10 in one in their quad three and quad four games. Their only loss being a quarter or a quad three loss to Missouri, a game that they seeded a 20 point lead to in the second half. And they lost in the final eight seconds of the game. So really, if they would have just handled business, they should have been 11 and 0 in quad three and quad four games, showing you they take care of the games they're supposed to. But when it comes to quad one and quad two games, which are more of those resume building games, Minnesota is currently six and eight. They're one and five in quad one games, and they are five and three in quad two games. Now, if you look at those quad one games, which are the the best of the best when it comes to building your tournament resume, yes, they're one and five, and their only win in that quad one game was at home versus Michigan State. But their losses have been so close. The five losses in quad one are the loss at Ohio State, which we talked about. They came back, and if they wouldn't have started so slow, they would have had a shot in that game. But then you talk about at Michigan State, where they really should have won that game, even without Elijah Hawkins, versus Wisconsin at home, where they nearly sent it to overtime and just rallied a little bit too late. And then at Iowa, where they had another 20-point lead at one point, and Iowa stormed back to win by five. And then at Purdue, where they had a 10-point lead in the second half late and were unable to close that one off. So five quad one losses that all could have been wins at any given point in time in the second half of that game. You move over to the quad two games, they're five and three wins versus Nebraska, Michigan, Maryland, Penn State, and Northwestern. Those have been their quad or quad two wins, but they have three losses as well. The loss to Iowa at home, the loss on the road at Indiana, and then the neutral game versus San Francisco. Now, the Iowa game and the San Francisco game weren't close. Those were games that the Gophers weren't really in, didn't have an opportunity to win. And so those were losses uh, straight up. The I, Indiana. Iowa, the Indiana game on the road, they had opportunities, but they weren't able to close it. But what hurts the most is that if you were watching these quad one games, they truly could be four and one in quad one games, or maybe even three and two in their quad one games. They had every single one of those teams on the ropes, except for Ohio State at Ohio State on the road when they started off slow. But besides that, the Michigan State, the at Iowa and the Wisconsin games were all truly winnable and probably should have been wins. Now, with the six games remaining, Minnesota has a chance at four more resume-building type wins. The Ohio State game tonight is a quad two opportunity. Then the next two games after that, you have Nebraska and Illinois, both road games. Both of those are quad one opportunities for Minnesota. So their next three games are all tournament resume-type games. And if uh, both of those teams that you have 
shown some weaknesses throughout the year, especially in the late part of the year. Minnesota has already beaten Nebraska, came back from a 17-point deficit in the second half. And then Illinois just lost to Penn State the past couple of days. So they've shown some weaknesses, some blemishes, and the opportunity to be had. If Minnesota can take those games, it will work wonders for their uh, tournament resume and being able to put themselves into the conversation. Now, from there, after those three games, Minnesota has two home games that aren't much of a resume building game, but then you close out with a road game at Northwestern, which again is a quad one opportunity. So Minnesota needs to win three, at least three of the four resume building games in their final six games. If they can do that, they will be nine and nine in their resume games which at least gives you a case. Now, you also hope that one of those wins is probably versus Illinois, so you can also have a ranked win on your schedule. You only played three ranked teams on the year, so taking one of the three definitely is helpful, especially when you were competitive with the other two teams. So you, you're you going to hope that you get a win versus Illinois, get a ranked win and a quad one opportunity, but if they can win these next two games and you go uh, three wins in a row, so four wins total in a row because we just won our last game, if you can do that, you're going to stack up three tournament resume win or resume building type wins, and then everything else is basically just extra. If you can get one more win, you get to 20, but then also you have another opportunity at another quad one op- uh, game in the Northwestern game. And if you take that, you're 10 and 8, and all of a sudden it's looking a lot better. So overall, I think Minnesota still has a big case, but these next three games are critical. If you All of that being said, if Minnesota can get hot in these next seven days, so the games with Ohio State, Nebraska, and Illinois, and you pull off three victories, Minnesota will have a much stronger push, and attention will be coming the Gophers' way. But if they drop two of these next three, then it might be curtains for the NCAA tournament hopes for Gophers fans. So the next three games are huge. You're definitely going to want to watch each and every one of them. Hopefully you can show up to the Ohio State game tonight. If you haven't got tickets, there are still some available. But it's going to be a big matchup for the Gophers starting tonight and through the next seven days. Now, the final thing we're going to talk about on today's show is Ben Johnson because he, it is past time. He has earned an apology from the Gophers fan base. No matter where you were on the spectrum, he has earned that apology. And I'm going to tell you why coming up next. First, let's talk about our friends over at FanDuel because FanDuel is America's number one sports book and you can get buckets over on FanDuel with the NBA season in full swing. We're hitting the best point of the NBA season where every game is going to start to matter. Playoff implications are coming. And then once the playoffs come, it's the best basketball of the year. So hopefully you can take advantage by getting a new customer's first bet opportunity with FanDuel where you get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. So bet on all of your favorite NBA players and teams with opportunities at quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, Govers fans, we're wrapping this one up with the, the statement of a lifetime. Ben Johnson has earned an apology from the fan base. Regardless of tourney results this season and getting in or not getting in, I think Minnesota fans as a whole probably owe Ben Johnson an apology because people have been calling for his job consistently since the end of year one. It feels like at the in the face of any adversity this team has faced, folks are ready to say, I told you so. But now that we have finally seen some carryover year to year on the roster, not plagued by injuries, and his recruiting classes are starting to come through, now we are seeing the team have more fight, flashes of a system on both offense and defense, grit on defense, and more success, more winning. Now, some will say it's year three and we should be in the tournament, and they can still get there. But Ben has been adamant, and I agree with him 100%, that from the jump, he said he is not here for a quick fix or a one good year. 
there is a way to do that. There is a way to go out, get a bunch of transfers that can make it happen, have a good year, and then everything kind of restarts the next year. But that isn't sustainable. He knows that if this program wants to be a contender and a fighter in the Big Ten year after year after year, then it has to be done the right way, and it has to be done sustainably. Well, now we're starting to see those results slowly but surely. Now, looking at his transfers over his three years in coaching with the Gophers, we have seen studs and helpful players. Jameson Battle, who had a huge year and an okay year for the Gophers. Peyton Willis, who came back and had a career year. Uh, Luke Lowy and EJ Stevens both played decently in their one year here. Then you look at the next year, his year two transfers coming in, Dawson Garcia, who's been a major piece, the face of the program over the last year and a half, two years. You've had Talon Cooper, who absolutely balled out. Now, he ended up transferring again, but he had a lot of production here, was one of the best assist men in the country during his time here, and showed that he was a high-quality player and a great find from a low major that Ben Johnson brought to Dinky Town. Both of them had big years for Minnesota. And though Cooper left a year after a year, the production and the talent Ben is finding is some of in some of the low majors has shown he has a good eye for talent and what fits his system in the right way. Then you look at this year with the transfers, Elijah Hawkins balling out huge factor might be the heartbeat of this team and then mike mitchell jr who is a spark plug scorer and a steel menace playing major minutes for the gophers ben is showing his success in the portal department which is huge for having that sustainable success but also finding the right culture fits and buy-in and wanting to be here in minnesota and playing with their brothers and building something special that commitment to family that is the motto of this team now i'm not saying every transfer is a star we've had Torres samuels who was questioned by many fans you have jack wilson who fans love the guy but there haven't been a lot of minutes or production for him you've got sutherland who didn't do a ton daniels who didn't do a ton there are a few transfers out there that just weren't the right fit or the quality uh, minutes that maybe people were anticipating. But that being said, there have been a lot of hits in comparison and not just slight hits, but big wins. So overall, his his success in the transfer portal has got to give you some hope, some, some happiness when it comes to this program and how it's building. But then you turn to recruiting. Now, yes, it stung to lose a five-star Dennis Evans, but NIL wasn't something that was super established here with the Gophers, especially on the basketball side of things. It was more so heavily approached with football, and we couldn't control that at the time. Now, he had an injury, and he basically didn't get to play much, if at all, in his freshman season, and we'll see what happens for him. But aside from that, his commits have been doing fairly well over the three classes that he's had. Now, in his first class, he had five commits. One of them was an early enrollee, an early declare, uh, reclassified player in Caden Betts. Now, he's still TBD, but he was an early reclass. So he came in when he should have been a senior in high school. I have high hopes for him moving forward in the future years. But then you've got Pharrell Payne who has been a big hit and growing and one of the most dominant players in the Big Ten as a post player. You've got Braden Carrington, who is a rock-solid player, great defender. Then you've got Joshua Joseph, who I definitely didn't give enough credit coming into that his freshman year and the type of player he was. I thought he was going to be more of a 3-and-D type player, a player who's really used kind of like a Jay Crowder in the NBA. That's kind of what I saw Josh Ola Joseph as, and I was wrong. He's an athletic freak, and he's still coming into his own. There's still a lot of positives about his game. His minutes have been up and down, but he has shown the flashes to be a really quality player. That was Ben Johnson's first class. Definitely not a first bad first class to have. Now, that's also Jaden Henley, who I will count as a miss for Ben Johnson. The talent was there, but also he was a little bit selfish, and he hasn't found much success moving over the Big East as well. So in a class of five players, you have one question mark, one miss, and three hits. You'll take that, especially coming late into the recruiting stages when he was hired. Then he moved to his second class, and that class is a lower or a, a smaller class. You had Dennis Evans, but he ended up asking for a release from his commitment. It was super unfortunate. But then you had Cam Christie, who is a shining star in the making. And he is absolutely 
under recruited and he had good offers. He had offers from Michigan State and Virginia and Iowa and other schools, Illinois. But he chose Minnesota and it is showing that that was perfection for Ben Johnson in his recruiting. That was a big win. And as he continues to stack those type of wins, get in early on those guys, build those relationships and show why they should want to come here. But then also showing them thriving here only helps his case for future recruits. So I think overall that was amazing for the Gophers. Then you have Christopas Kainis. He comes from overseas. He hasn't really got to play. So he's kind of a question mark player. But also he is learning coming from overseas. So there's lots of opportunities for him to still step into minutes in future years. So we're TBD on that one. So again, one hit, one question mark. Then he moved to his third class. You've got Isaac Asuma, who was seen as a lower three-star guy in the state. A lot of people weren't in on him. A lot of people were asking why we weren't going for Daniel Freitag instead of Isaac Asuma and all of that. You know, Isaac Asuma has continued to ball and ball and stack on wins and get bigger and stronger and lead his teams, AAU teams, his high school teams. And all of a sudden now he's a stud four-star guard, the second best player in the state, and has been nothing but on the rise since his junior year to now. He, like I said, he's risen to be a, the second best player in the state, only behind Jackson McAndrews, and he is a top 100 prospect, even passing Daniel Freitag in the recruiting rankings. Super excited for him. Him working with Elijah Hawkins for a year could not only be massive for this Gophers team and having another player who can be a ball handler and a distributor, but also then to let Isaac Asuma thrive once Hawkins is out of eligibility. I think that that timing is going to be perfect in everything, and Isaac Asuma is going to be a major player for the Gophers next season even. And then you've got Grayson Grove. He has the upside. He has the scoring ability. And I'm curious to see if his recruiting would have been a bit bigger had injuries not happened. But it's a great get for Ben Johnson and the team. And hopefully could be another success that we see across the board when it comes to Ben Johnson's recruiting. But regardless, you see the success coming and showing. And with both the portal and the recruiting, that is how you move the needle. That is is the winning coming along. That is the culture growing. And I think it is about time we all give Ben Johnson an apology as this thing continues to build and grow the right way. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Like I said, we're going to have another show this evening after the Ohio State game to make sure we cover what happened and hopefully how the Gophers are moving forward with another win. I'll see you then. Bro the boats, got you my go Gophers as always. And don't forget to subscribe.